Welcome to an AP Human Geography video on Unit 1 Practice MCQs. So before we begin, I'm going to pull up a question on the screen. It's your job to pause the video and time yourself around 60 seconds per question. Um, so yeah. And then these questions are created to be like the Spring AP Hug Exam and to help you refresh your memory on content for Unit 1 concepts. Let's go. So the first question is on the screen. All right, the correct answer is, pause if you need more time, the correct answer is B, JFK Airport. So what is a nodal region? Well, a nodal region is also called a functional region, and it functions around a node or a focal point. So the JFK Airport is, you know, the focal point. The place in New York is the, pl is the point, and then all the airports and airlines, not airports, all the airlines um, and airplanes going to and from the airport are going to be connected to this region. But they're all going to be focused around the node, which is going to be the airport itself. The Nile River Valley is not really focused on a node. It has the valley, has the river. That's what makes it the river valley. The Asia, the Asia, um, Asia and Cook Islands don't really have a focal point at all. It's just there. They have um, spatial extent, boundaries. There we go. The Wheat Belt, it's focused around wheat, which is just something. It's not really like a place. Um, wheat is not really a place. You can eat wheat, you can cook with wheat, you can do a bunch of things with wheat, but you can't be at wheat. All right, here's the next question on map projections. And the correct answer is, pause if you need more time, E, all of the above. So the Robinson map projection is one of those projections that kind of distorts a little bit of everything. Um, map projections are created because we're putting a 3D surface on a 2D map, or a 2D piece of paper, or a 2D object. So things are not going to look the way they are supposed to. So distance, shape, area, and angle are the four things that can be distorted on map projections. And it's four things that the Robinson map projection distorts something. Um, so some things are going to be a little bit more distorted than others. Shape is not distorted as much as distance or area. Angle is another one. That's going to be distorted a ton. As you can see here, the lines have different angles as you get further out to the east or west or to the north or south. All right, next question. And this time we have a stimulus. Make sure you use the stimulus when answering the question. And the correct answer is E, developing highway infrastructure projects. So we are at looking, we're looking at a pretty large scale. Um, small scale is kind of be that world. Large scale is the more zoomed in you are. So what are we going to use this for? Well, it's actually showing us population growth. And you should be able to determine this by looking at where we are. So we're looking at Arkansas and population growth. You may have a question on your AP exam asking you what is the map showing, and you're not going to be giving a title or maybe asking you to create a title um, through an MCQ. So population growth. We're not seeing really any change here. If we saw two maps from different time periods, then we could say population growth, but it's not showing us that. Finding a location for a future coffee shop. We're probably going to look at a larger scale, actually, larger scale than this. Maybe at a county scale to determine um, a coffee shop location. Um, so we want to see where population is, where minimum wage is, where the income is for an area. Then we look at funding of the school districts. We are not told about the age data. So these could be an aging population in Arkansas. We don't know that. And then selecting a certain number of federal representatives for the state. You're going to learn more about this in Unit 4. But representatives are determined by population of the whole state, not by area in the state. And so E is kind of left with developing highway infrastructure projects. They want to develop highways that get to these populated areas, so the central and northwest regions of Arkansas, and kind of build less um, highways around areas with less people, so particularly southern Arkansas. All right, we're going to use that same stimulus again on this next question. And the correct answer is C, state. We're looking at a state scale, not scale of analysis, but scale. Scale is just what we're looking at. We're looking at a state uh, the state of Arkansas, meaning we're looking at a state scale. It's not local or county scale of analysis, sorry, not local or county scale because you're not looking at a local area. If you think of local areas, think of your community. I wouldn't consider a state to be my community. I would consider at most my county to be my community, even though the county uh, sense of place just feels different, 
when I go to the other side of the county. All right, so the correct answer to this is C, environmental possibilism. Environmental possibilism kind of says, yes, the environment has limitations. We know, we know. But humans can overcome these limitations. Anything is possible, which is the difference between B, determinism, which kind of says the environment sets limitations. Humans cannot overcome these limitations. Human actions are influenced by the environment. Sustainability talks about using resources um, carefully and saving them for next generations. That has something to do with the Golden Gate Bridge. If we were talking about the materials, maybe. Kind of the same thing with cultural ecology. Uh, we can see materials can be used varying on where we are in the world just because of where they offered and what is, you know, known and what the prices of those materials and stuff like that. Some cultures have known to become wealthier than others. And that's all part of cultural ecology. But we're not being told about that in the question. We're just being said the bridge. What is the bridge doing itself? Well the bridge is allowing people to get from point A to point B over water. We're overcoming the challenge of water. Anything is possible, we can get over the water. It's C environmental possibilism. Next question. The correct answer is C. Why is it C? Well, what piece of data that is um, issued every 10 years collects household numbers and area and, um, sorry, area, well, things about race in an area? Well, that's the census. And this data is collected into census tracts, counties, states. It's given at various scales and various, various scales of analysis. But the census tract is probably the largest scale that you're going to get. Voting district has nothing to do with household number and race. Um, if anything, it's going to relate more to household number because a district may be smaller because they want to have each district represent the same amount of population. County, a county can be large, a county can be small. It can be different in areas per county based on ethnic enclaves and stuff like that. State, same thing. If you go to Louisiana, the culture is going to be different in New Orleans than in um, up north in Monroe or in Shreveport. And then in national, we can definitely see various um, data in the country. People in Alaska may have smaller families uh, than people in Kansas. People in urban areas have smaller families than people in the suburbs because of cost of living and just living space in general and just lack of privacy and crime rates and stuff like that. All right, next question. And the correct answer is C. Locating planes in air traffic control. So a global positioning system determines absolute location or absolute distance. So A, we can't really get an absolute location of a hurricane. We get, can't get an address. We can't get an exact point of latitude and longitude. Uh, we could do distance between hurricanes. Uh, but we're, not also, we're probably going to use um, remote sensing or a GIS for that. A geographic information system for that. Mapping areas with tornado damage areas are static. They're not going to move over time. So we're not going to use a GPS for that because um, a GPS, we can put it on someone who is on house arrest to see where they are in a county. Um, they're going to move it. They're not going to be static for the rest of their lives or the rest of the time they're on house arrest. Then observing gentrification in a city over time. Um, we can see this through photography, field observation, uh, visualization, stuff like that. We can use it with our eyes. A GPS, we're not really using it with our eyes. Um, so yeah. And then displaying volcanic activity, we're probably going to use remote sensing and satellite imagery to see what this activity looks like from space, looks like from an area, looks like above, below the volcano and the mountain, stuff like that. C, we're using the location, the absolute location of these planes. It's critical that we know where these planes are um, and traffic control. I don't know why I have a timer up there um, for some reason, but for 10, it's not there. Well, the correct answer is B, satellite navigation system. This is a picture, um, by the way, so I didn't know if you knew that, but you kind of should have known that to pick B. It's not visualization. Visualization is kind of like a drawing. Let's say we had a drawing of light pollution. Then it'd be visualization. It's not field observation. They're not at a city and taking pictures of all the lights there. It's not a geographic information system. We're not looking at various scales here. And it's not a global positioning system. We're not looking at absolute location or absolute distance. So it's satellite navigation system because we are looking at a satellite image and stuff like that. And the correct answer is B. Sorry, 
A, national. I don't know why I picked B. We're looking at data per country, and that's what scale of analysis is. What are we comparing data to? We're comparing and contrasting data per country, meaning we are looking at a national scale of analysis. We are not looking at a global scale of analysis because data is confined to a country. Global scale of analysis was where data is not confined to an area. So that's something to know. All right, so we're going to use the two previous stimuli in this question. And the correct answer is A, online mapping. So we took an image here and put it into a map or a graph, however the hell you want to call it, and it is online mapping. Visualization. It would be visualization if we drew the map ourselves to match the area, um, or we drew a graph that's not this specific. Um, it wouldn't be remote sensing because there's only one satellite image. Landscape analysis, we could say that this is landscape analysis if the graph was a statement, probably, um, at most a statement. And then photographic interpretation, kind of the same thing. We would need a statement to determine um, that as photographic interpretation with the amount of light pollution. All right, our next question, 11 out of 17 on types of maps. And the correct answer is E, isoline maps. So we're determining elevation levels across Florida. So we're going to be looking at a probably a more quantitative data. Elevation is a quantitative um, use of measurement. So we're not going to be using our reference or political maps. We're looking at a thematic map, which is C, D, and E. Now, C is a choropleth. If we were looking at a static elevation, like um, data per country, then we would use choropleth. Proportional symbol, um, we're not going to use this. It just wouldn't make sense for um, elevation. We don't want to count the different symbols, uh, no matter what they are, to determine the elevation. And that leaves us with option E, isoline. The closer they are together, the more change that there is going to be. The less, um, the less that they are together, so the more dispersed the lines are, the less change there's going to be with these isoline maps. So the changes in elevation for this circumstance in Florida. Next question. And the correct answer is A, legal documents. So we're determining formal regions. They're formal. They are there. They do not change no matter where you are. They do not change person to person. That's called a vernacular region. So B is going to be wrong because this can change from person to person. A mental map of a street can leave out some features from one person to another. C is wrong because a demarcated boundary, learn about this in Unit 4, is going to be just a physical boundary. They can be off a little bit, not in their perfect spot. The Four Corners Monument is not in the exact spot it should be. Um, but it is a formal um, boundary, formal region, when you're looking at a map, just not in person. Um, we're not looking at a focus point. A focus point is used for a nodal region or functional regions. And then cultural features. Cultural features can be a part of a formal region. Louisiana and Texas are formal regions, and the cultures are different between the regions, between the people, and the sense of place is different. I feel different when I'm in Louisiana and Texas. You'll learn more about that in Unit 3, which is about culture. So that leaves us with A, legal documents. Legal documents do not change where you are in the world. You do not change person to person. All right, we got another stimulus question. And we're going to have to determine where countries are without their names. This is a trait that you need to have when it comes to AP Human. And when you get to that exam in May. The correct answer is D. Um, so what are we looking at here? Well, I circled um, each answer choice with a different color. And then on this map, I circled the countries on here. So we can compare and contrast the shading here. So we're looking at a choropleth math, by the way. So that's very, very cool. So I'm going to pull up a laser pointer. Ooh, laser. So Ashne, Algeria and Tanzania. So Algeria is right here. Tanzania is right here. And it's circled in yellow. They're pretty light. If you look at Mali and Nigeria right here in West Africa, they're going to be darker. South Africa and Chad are even darker as well. They're in the purple. Um, part D, I'm not even going to pronounce these countries. They're here in the southern part of Africa, kind of on that eastern coast. And they are really dark. And then option E, Madagascar and Ethiopia. Madagascar is dark, but Ethiopia is pretty light, kind of lighter than Nigeria. So if we kind of combine them together, option D has really dark countries. It's the only set with two extremely dark countries, and that makes option D the best answer.
Next question. All right. So which type of map will most likely be used to display population density per country across the world? And the correct answer is B, Choropleth. The last map we saw for question 13 was a Choropleth map. We're comparing um, data per country in our case. And it was per, um, actually it was per country in the last one too. So Choropleth would be the best answer. We're looking at a thematic map and that's going to rule out option A. We're not going to want to count anything to determine population. So that's going to rule out option C and D. And a flow map just really wouldn't make sense in this take. Um, it would be better for our eyes and organization if we picked a chloroplast map. All right, here we go. We got three more questions. We can do it. We can do it. Like the video if you made it this far, by the way. Um, so yeah. The correct answer is A, relative location. So house prices can change based on location. Houses and apartments and stuff are going to be more expensive in urban areas, and they're going to be cheaper in our suburbs. They're also going to be more expensive on the coastline than they are inland. So in the United States, the average home price is $295,000. But if you go to like the eastern part of Florida, they're going to be more than $295,000. They're going to be in the millions. But if you go to a spot like Missouri, <laughs> they're going to be uh, maybe a little cheaper than $295,000. Maybe in Mississippi, North Mississippi, you're going to see them at $295,000 or less. Uh, so yeah, it's not scale of analysis because even scale of analysis can have – different home prices let's say we're looking at a county scale of analysis and we're looking at a county in florida let's say we're looking at miami dade the closer we are to the coast the more expensive the home prices are going to be all right here we go question about mental maps and regions and the correct answer is e vernacular region and that's what a mental map is what is a vernacular region well a vernacular region is also known as a perceptual region and it's just a region that varies from person to person um, and a mental map can vary person to person. It can leave out some traits that are different from person to person when they draw out the mental map. I can think of my city and think of certain things and draw them out in a certain way that another person may do differently. And that's why a mental map is considered to be a vernacular region. All right, our last question. Yay, subscribe if you made it this far. Um, and yeah, pick the best answer. The best answer is C, the hermit as an isolated island. So we had a question earlier about determinism and possibilism, about the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, we kind of had an example of possibilism. Now we're talking about um, environmental determinism. So let's go through all these answer choices. The creation of the Panama Canal. We have land here that's in the way of the water. The Panama Canal allows people to get through, um, you know, the Americas through water. So we got through that challenge of the land being there. So that's kind of going with environmental possibilism. That's like everything is possibilism. Terry's farming. That's where we're farming on really hilly areas. We have a problem with hilly farming. It can be hard to farm on hilly areas. But we have overcome this with terrace farming. C is correct because the hermit is an isolated island. It's taken longer to adapt to pop culture and, you know, get things from other places and, you know, diffuse its culture to other places around the world. The use of pesticides. We have a challenge with insects and other animals eating our crops. Pesticides kill these. So that's environmental possibilism. Irrigation of the Aral Sea. We have a problem. Our area is dry. Let's get some water from the Aral Sea. We're using our environment. We're using our limitations to our advantage. That's possibilism. And that leaves us with C, the correct answer. Do you want, now, do you want more practice with Unit 1 or other AP Hub concepts? Well, check out this link on the screen. There will be a comment below to check it out. It has free MCQs and FRQs and a way to contact me without doxing me. And that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to have a Unit 1 FRQ video. So we're going to go through one Unit 1 FRQ together. Um, that's very, very cool. And that's going to be a card above the video if you want to check that out. Go click on the link in the screen and check out more MCQs and FRQs. Uh, so yeah. But I will see you guys in the next video after you subscribe. I like the video, of course. It's free. You can change your mind later on. Adios.